Hello everyone, welcome to Hobby Quest, where I like to explore any hobby that's currently piquing my interest. Today's topic, while not necessarily a traditional hobby, is about reclaiming your digital privacy by leaving Apple's walled garden and creating your own ecosystem with DGoogle, Android, and Linux. With AI becoming ever more integrated into our devices, our personal privacy is becoming increasingly compromised. While Apple promotes privacy as a key feature, they still maintain complete control over your data. Yes, they're arguably the best among tech giants when it comes to privacy, but their ecosystem comes with some significant drawbacks. You're dealing with really expensive hardware and accessories, planned obsolescence, limited customization options, and for the most part, complete dependency on Apple services. In today's economic climate, these limitations and costs are becoming harder and harder to justify. But whatever the reason for wanting to leave Apple and creating your own ecosystem, you're going to have to put in some work. Having gone through this journey recently myself, I hope I can make your transition a little smoother. This will be a four part series. Today in part one, we're covering micro G setup and alternative app stores. Part two will tackle moving from iMessage, Part three will cover replacing your email and syncing your calendars, contacts, notes, and reminders with Fastmail. And then in part four, we will discuss some essential apps and services. Before we begin, I do need to mention that installing a custom ROM is likely to void your warranty. It does require some technical knowledge and there's a small risk of breaking your device. Initial setup might take one to two hours depending on how smooth it goes. Because of this, always back up your data before proceeding. Let's talk about devices and software. This guide focuses on custom ROMs like Lineage OS, CR Droid, Calyx OS, and so on. We will be discussing Graphene OS in a future series, so stay tuned. After testing out a bunch of custom ROMs, I personally recommend Lineage OS. It's by far the most stable with weekly security updates, the largest supported devices list I've seen, and it recently added signature spoofing, which we're going to need for Micro-G. For hardware, in my case, I chose to replace my iPhone 14 with a OnePlus 7T. Why? Well, it was inexpensive, supported by multiple custom ROMs, it still has that handy notification slider, and I did like the idea of giving an older device new life. While this video won't cover installing a custom ROM, I will link some great resources in the description below. And I'll eventually be making a series covering various custom ROMs and how to install them and set them up. Before we start installing anything, let's understand why we need Micro-G. Normally, an Android phone comes with Google Play services baked into the operating system. This handles several important functions. Push notifications, like that Slack message from your boss asking you to hop on a quick meeting. Location services, using cell tower, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi signals, to more accurately determine your location beyond just the use of GPS signals, which can be a little bit slow. Authentication systems like reCAPTCHA and safety net or play integrity checks for apps like banking applications. Micro-G will help us replace these services. However, to get safety net checks to pass, you will need to root your phone, which I wouldn't recommend due to security risks. However, if you want to learn more about this, I'll link some helpful resources in the description. Once you have your custom ROM installed, you'll notice it's very bare bones. You likely don't even have an app store, so let's go ahead and fix that. First, open your stock browser and search for Droidify. This is an F-Droid client that gives you a much better user interface than F-Droid itself. F-Droid is an open source app store that hosts open source applications. Find the Droidify GitHub page, scroll to releases, and download the latest APK. You'll need to allow installation permissions here. Once Droidify is installed, open it up. You'll likely notice that it's empty. It does come with two repos added by default, but we will need to add a couple more. Think of repos like specialized app collections. Click on the repos tab and let's add the ones that we need. We'll need the Micro-G repo, and I'd also suggest adding Bitwarden, Cryptomator, KDE, Molly, and NewPipe, which we will discuss in part four. It's possible that there are still no apps shown after adding the repos, in which case, you may just need to close Droidify and open it back up again. Now search for Micro-G. We need to install several components here. Micro-G Services Core, Micro-G Companion, Micro-G Services Framework Proxy, Nominatum, and Local NLP. Now open Micro-G Settings and click on Self-Check. Here's what you should see. 
The signature spoofing checkbox should already be checked. If it's not, try checking it now. If you can't enable signature spoofing, that means your ROM doesn't support it, which is exactly why I recommend Lineage OS. On your device, battery optimization will not be checked like it is on mine. Now, let's go through the self-check page. Check all options except for battery optimization and enable every permission it asks for. We'll come back to battery optimization later. Return to the main page. It's time to enable our core services. While technically none of these are absolutely necessary, I do recommend enabling most of them for the best experience. That's why you've installed MicroG after all. For notifications to work properly, you'll need to enable device registration and enable cloud messaging. If you use apps with recapture for logging in, lose it being an example, you'll want to enable safety net. Here you can test safety net attestation. However, like mentioned earlier, it's going to fail and you'll need to root your phone to fix this. You can also test recapture. But fair warning, testing recaptcha here will probably be the longest captcha test of your life. And yes, you will spend way too much time debating whether that tiny corner of a motorcycle counts as being in the square or not. Next up, location services. This is where those services we installed earlier, nominatum and local NLP, come into play. Enable location services, set nominatum as your address lookup provider, and configure local NLP for geolocation. And when prompted, make sure to enable location permissions for both nominatum and local NLP. Now, restart your phone completely. Open MicroG settings again, go back to self-check, and now you can enable battery optimization, and go ahead and grant any final permissions that it requests. Congratulations! you now have MicroG fully configured. But before we wrap up, let's install two more essential app stores. First up is Aurora Store. Open Droidify and go ahead and search for it. Aurora Store is essentially a Google Play Store wrapper. It lets you install Play Store apps without needing Google services on your phone. Aurora Store lets you install apps anonymously, but for paid apps, you will need to sign in with a Google account. Personally, I created a separate Google account just for this purpose. Finally, let's install Obtanium through Droidify. Obtanium isn't really a traditional app store. When you open it, you'll see an add app tab where you can paste a GitHub releases page URL. You can then install the app after adding the releases page and Obtanium will allow you to update the apps whenever a new release is published on GitHub. And finally, let's make sure everything is working correctly by doing a quick test. Open up Aurora Store and search for Magic Earth. While not open source, it's a privacy-focused navigation app that we'll cover in detail in part four of this series. If you want, you can do this with Google Maps, Waze, Organic Maps, or any navigation app of your choice. Go ahead and install Magic Earth, open it up, and enable the location permissions when prompted. If everything's working correctly, you should see your location appear on the map. This is a great way to confirm that MicroG's location services are functioning properly. Now don't worry if it doesn't work on the first try. This seems to happen to me every time I've done this. If you don't see your location, first close the app completely, restart your phone, and then open Magic Earth again. This time, you should see Ask for Additional Location Precision Permissions. Make sure to enable these. They're necessary for accurate location services. Once you see your location on the map, you'll know that MicroG is set up correctly and we're ready to move forward with the rest of our de-Google journey. And that's it for part one. Next time we'll tackle the biggest hurdle for most iPhone users, replacing iMessage and moving your messages over from iPhone to Android. Thank you all for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Drop a comment down below with any questions you have. I'll answer all of them. I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you in part two.